All right, guys, what's going on? So much needed, much overdue follow up with Jim Kobuleski. He's back from Maine. He's crushing it here in the market garden. Said he's just starting to kind of pick up over there. You know, he's having some great weeks. Sales have been pretty decent. Um, I want to show you guys what he's growing, where he's taking it, and hopefully we don't get any sirens here in the background today. And you know, I had a ton of comments on that last video with Jim about the sirens and the police and this and that. Like Jim is like literally right next door to the police station. That red roof you see is like a building where they keep vehicles. You know, there's 100 cop cars over there in that parking lot. Um, there's a police station right here. So, you know, if there's an emergency, this is where they, you know, turn on their sirens and fly at them. So, you know, neither Jim or I noticed those sirens in that last video. If I would have, I probably would have stopped and reshot that for y'all. So, sorry about that. I've had 100 comments about those sirens. I'll be a little bit more careful here in the future. Oh, carrots are coming up. Carrots, you said? Yep. How old is this bed, Jim? Um, let me think. These are probably 10 days old, the carrots. And then this was planted probably two weeks ago. Two weeks now? Yeah, so it'll be a shift from what we're going to see over there to over here probably in two weeks. Uh, this will be going to Tasty Tuesday. This is two weeks planting? Two weeks ago. Okay. Soil blocks. Oh, okay, you know, okay. So the soil blocks are big. And then this is when I first got here. And you see how the armadillo just went down the path? Oh, he was just in here this morning, huh? Yeah. Eating all your worms. Yeah, but the, the more worms in the past, that's telling me I might want to use those. But yeah, I'm getting a little order ready for the health food store. Okay, nice. So, I'm going to go over there. How many days a week are you delivering to those guys? Well, oh, some days, um, or some weeks, three times. Really? They keep, yeah, because they just can't keep it stocked. How long have these been in the ground, Jim? I don't know. We'll have to look at the, have to look at the tag. The tag. I'd say probably 25 days. Nice. Maybe even because they're supposed to be 21. And these sell really well for them. Because she was, Cindy brought them some radishes, just a regular kind, and they didn't sell. So I don't know. They like the French, French breakfast. Really? Yeah, I guess there's a French name for this Diavagon or something, but it's French breakfast is the easy one to remember. But they're so red. Now you were at Tasty Tuesdays yesterday. What did you do if you had anything left extra there? Do you take that to rice? I did, but I was expecting, you know, I harvested, over harvested so I could have stuff for rice, but then Tasty Tuesday wiped me out. All I had was arugula really left for them. Really? Yeah. I mean, that was... I can't believe um, that people show up like that. I mean, that was probably my record day yesterday. At Tasty Tuesdays? Yeah, by myself. Like last year I was doing it with Michaela with help. And yeah, so yeah, it broke 700 yesterday. 700 yesterday? Yeah. Nice. I mean, that's for a little market. That's pretty cool. So this will be a good month. Yeah, I'd say, you know, I'd say the next 12, yeah, I'd say it's a thousand dollars a month for a couple of months if things keep up like they are. A thousand dollars a week, excuse me. Yeah. And that's without too much value added stuff from Maine, right? No, well, there's still been that a little because um, the garlic is always good. Um, and, you know, you sell a couple of blueberries, you know, I got them canned blueberries, they yeah. work out great. And then behind you is the arugula, that's been cut once. This is coming back. Nice. Are you mixing that bunch up so it won't all just be the one variety then, huh? Yeah, it's kale bouquet. Kale bouquet. You Those never, aren't all kale. No, are not they? kale. Excuse me. Mustard bouquet. Mustard bouquet. I do okay. bouquets. And I try to plant so that there's a variety, you know, in yeah. the row, so you can pick it that way. When I'm really trying to be more efficient, I'll pick one of each variety or a bunch of each variety, and then go put them the bouquets together on a table in there. And this bunch was planted as minis. Mini blocks. Yeah, because I had extra. 
And I didn't know what to do with them, so I just went ahead and put minis in. I didn't expect anything to happen, but it did. So I'm sure folks are wondering, how was your sweet potato harvest this year? I'd say the best one ever. Best one ever? Yep. And wow. Was, you know, there was a lot of uglies again, but um, I'd say conservatively 3,000 pounds. 3,000 pounds, jeez. Yeah, but only probably 25% of those were pretty. But, you know, Rice is selling uglies now. They're taking them too? They're taking the uglies. Store, yeah. Really. But they have the diversity here so that, you know, they're not just one block. You know, it's not all that efficient, but, you know, it gives you those colors, you know, which is really cool. And that's one of my focuses is to have it look beautiful for the neighborhood. Bit of an aesthetic. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I don't know, there's probably 10 different kinds of uh, mustards here. Jim, so when you got back in town this year, you harvested sweet potatoes. Did you have a lot of turmeric to harvest? Yeah, I probably filled, I don't know, probably 50 pounds. 50 pounds? Yeah, and I'm selling it slowly. Um, but mine wasn't anything compared to Mark, so I gotta figure that out and talk to him. I think he's planting deep. Deep and watering. And water, yeah. Yeah. But now I got, you know, I got the irrigation system here. Really? Yeah, I mean, there's irrigation. Every that blue flag's one, blue flag in the corner. All on there, so I could run drip to them. Are you running it? No, I okay. haven't got my act together yet. Okay, so it needs a little retrofit. Yeah, because I think there's four zones. And you're still running off of that well? Yeah. With a little bit of salt in it? Yeah, and I okay. swear that's why um, the, the kale, or not the kale, the uh, chard yeah. is doing so well. From the salt? Yeah. So you attribute that to it, wow. But it, nothing else is faltering up from it, so it must be really low. When you think about local food, you know, I'm growing this with the Newport Ritchie compost and harvesting it and taking it three blocks away to the health food store. You know, that is a really tight circle. You know, it seems like a lot of people that are um, starting to do local, they get um, well known and they start expanding. You know, because like Tide Mill's going to Portland now. So it's not, not so that, local anymore. Yeah, not that that's bad, but it's just quite different. Yeah, there's that dazzling blue again, too. Ooh, very gorgeous. So now we're on to the kale. Yep, okay. kale bouquets. And this is that rainbow laffinato. So I think, so Frank Morton bred both of these. Um, so he must have somehow got it to straighten out more. Supposedly one of them's got a cabbage background to it, too. Really? Yeah. And then this is a traditional Dinosaur. dinosaur. And you know, I always think to figure a bunch is what fills my hand nicely. Yeah, there's no weight to that or no, not the deer madness or anything. Most of my stuff is never weight, it's all eyeball. There's some beets. So I've never been able to grow beets either, and that's gonna be a nice beet. What do you mean? That's salt water too, they're in the same family. So you think the salt water's helping the beets also? It's the same family as the chard and the spinach. I've never been able to grow spinach, I haven't grown spinach all that well lately, but um, it still grows. Whereas before, I couldn't get it to do anything. But this is why it's hard to work with somebody else, because I mean, I can hardly find what's all here. <laughs> you know? I mean, I forgot, oh, there's, I forgot these are here. Oh, you forgot the cows were over here? Yeah. I mean, I forgot I had red Russian over here. So that's going to help add to it. Because I'd like to get five. And these are going to start getting shaded out by the Chinese broccoli. That's that Happy Ridge. That's the best one to grow in Florida, I'd say, out of all the sprouting broccoli. Happy Ridge? Happy Ridge. Because Suho's down here, and it's just, they're not as big. Oh, you've yeah. already cut those. Oh, I think I, so when you grow these, you want to, It'll put up a little teeny head like that um, Arcadia is now. Cut that really quick so then it goes sideways. You want the sideways. Yeah, if you let it, it won't do good if you don't do that. Oh yeah, we'll have plenty. We won't have to rob too deeply. But the idea would be to kind of take leaves and see this one's kind of going over to shade that out, so do that. Basically just thinning. Yeah, thinning so that interplanting works better that way. 
How much watering are you doing this time of year, Jim? Like last year, I was doing a lot. This year, hardly any. Hardly I've any. watered maybe this whole area, maybe eight times. Eight times since October? Yeah. And we're into the third week of January. January yeah, I mean, nice. if we look over at that new bed I did over there, um, you could see where, uh, where I put a little bit of mulch mm -hmm. and then I didn't mulch anything because it ain't mulch yet. It's night and day difference on the moisture it's holding. I mean, it's amazingly different. And I mean, that's what we'd expect, but to actually see it again and again is pretty cool. Oh, and I forgot, I get this. This is a new one. It's not very prolific, but it's called uh, purple kale, and it's a, a kale that is purple. That's a kale? Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. So that's Beautiful. another one I added, yeah. So kale is just as popular as it always has been, huh? It comes and goes. I, I don't know if it's the juicers are still buying it, but I had a couple neighbors that she just went vegan and she was buying it. She came late to the market and bought out pretty much everything I had left for kale and um, took a lot of arugula too, which wow. was great. So yeah, I can see definitely, you know, this community could support, you know, probably at least 10 of people doing what I'm doing. There's room you know. for more gems. Oh, yeah. What all have you used this trailer for? Harvesting citrus? Citrus was the first thing I got it for, and then I was bringing seaweed from the beach. Okay. You know, I haven't used seaweed much for lately, because I've been seeing it has, it stays forever. So I think there is a use for it, but I've got some compost that's at least three years old, and digging through it, there's still leaves of, whole leaves of um, that seagrass. Really? Yeah. That's pretty unbelievable. That did. stuff doesn't break down, huh? No, and so I'm thinking as a mulch, that would be a really good thing because it doesn't disappear. Wow. Um, and it also, remember when I did the test thing, trading the seaweed for peat in my soil block mix? Yeah. And I had zero germination in the seaweed? Yeah. So it were, it's a mulch that could repel. What do you think, it's killing weeds? Yeah. Really? It, well, it stopped germination. And then stay around a long time, so it could be the new mulch of the future. Wow. But then we just over harvest it like anything. It's like yeah, Cypress. Yeah. Not a bad way to spend the morning. Not bad at all, Jim. I've only been recording for two minutes, so like we're almost there, right? Yep. Wow. Jim, this is kind of living the dream, isn't it? Kind of. Huh? Yeah, I mean... I don't think there's no kind of there. Well... This is living. Yeah, it is. Riding your bike around town. Like, this is your responsibility for the day, to deliver some produce by bike, huh? And grow some more. <laughs> and grow some more. Yeah. Plus, I get some exercise. So this Different is... Different kind. This is local local, like... This is ultra local. Ultra local, yeah. 50% of your food is going within a, a mile of your house. The other 50% goes just to the next county below us. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, most of it. And I'd say 75% goes to between the library, Tasty Tuesday. 75%? Really? Actually. So you're moving that much more over in yeah. this local market. I like it. Jim, is this where all the magic happens? Yeah. I mean, I've got like a greenhouse here. South face, 
What? I can open the windows when it's cold. So you're not using the wall anymore? No, well, I'll use the wall when I get, I won't be able to get all the seedlings in here, but just for sprouting. So show everybody how you're starting these. So these are the mini blocks, um, and then they'll actually go up to, this one didn't germinate. So probably tomorrow or the next day I'll start and I'll make the big blocks, and then you just put that in there and push it down. But these are actually blocks Jimmy made for me that he did tomatoes in, because I'm not sure how soon I'm going to be leaving and it might be worth doing some shoulder season crops. Yeah. So I'm going to try some tomatoes and just see what happens. I self sowed some tomatoes too, because I've seen the best tomatoes I've ever had are the ones that show up wherever they, they just sprout. They see themselves. Yep. Yeah. And so I'm going to try some. I mean, I would just, who knows? I don't know something about moving them might make them not cool, but. So, now, so I, when I mulch that, I had a little left over. Can you see that spot that's got mulch on it? Okay, I mean, it looks a lot the same, but it's raised. Okay. Now see, here it's, it's just kind of dry, right? As you get deeper, it's better, but watch when you go underneath here. It's just like really moist, the difference. And that's the new mulch you think that's retaining that? I think, yeah. Now, Jim, you said you actually have somebody coming to get the Moringa Pods? The Moringa Pods, they call them drumsticks. It's a doctor, um, my ex-wife's mom's doctor, and he's um, from India, and he said once he saw that, he's coming over like every Sunday and getting like a handful, and he'll give me 20 bucks for them. He says it's the best drumsticks he's ever had, even from the India. Let's you go know? check it out, wow. Because that's the one that... I Is think he cooking them or using them for medicinal purposes? Cooks, no, he cooks them. It's all part of the... They got three different dishes they use. Really? Uh, yeah, they moved, and he, he had a specific size he wanted, which is a lot bigger than I thought. So is he getting them at the green stage? No, no. He's getting them, this might be just a little big, but he wants, yeah, this would be like, he, this was perfect. That size. I mean, that thing's like... I know, but what they do, I guess, heat. I guess what they do is cut it up, and then when you, um, you put it in your dish, and then the inside gets soft, and then you, you strip it out, the inside out. Wow. You know, like they do with um, artichokes? Yeah, yeah. So he was all fired up. And Is he that said the they, only thing you've ever been on the market so far on the Moringa? Or no, I used, to do, I used to do the powder. Just the powder, that's right. And I used to, every once in a while, I'm like, no, they're growing. Considering how cold it's been, it's amazing. But I'll take some leaves, you know, and just hang them in the stall and sell them for two bucks a bunch. But And you've had frost here a couple times, right? Right, but it's all, you know, out in the Spotty. open areas. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, this is exposed. It's not supposed to handle it. Well, again, you know, the frost, you know, it's, it's just on the ground. I don't know how that works, but up in the air, it has to get a lot colder. To, to actually frost. damage it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, Jim Kovaleski crushing it here in the Market Garden. This place is looking pretty epic right now. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share. Check out my other videos with Jim. They'll be in the description down below. And most importantly, pound that dirt.